uh, will gather in the Commons Chamber where the Prime Minister and other political party leaders and MPs as well um, who've been chosen to speak will pay tribute to the Duke of Edinburgh, the late Prince Philip. His funeral will take place next Saturday, this coming Saturday. Um, and of course, LBC will reflect that and bring it to you when it, when it happens. Let me return to some detail on that story emerging from Paris. Um, it's been reported that one person has been shot dead in front of a hospital in Paris. Uh, the Reuters news agency has been told by police sources that someone else was injured in the incident and is now being treated in uh, the hospital. Um, no details yet, no knowledge yet, I don't think, certainly no public knowledge yet on a motive for the killing. Um, looking on, obviously, the memories of the recent horrendous terrorist attacks in Paris obviously come to mind, but it is, uh, it, it is not possible to say yet what the motive is for this. But the attacker, uh, who shot dead one person and injured another, fled on a motorbike. Um, so as more detail emerges on that, we'll bring it to you. Uh, we've been talking about the easing of the lockdown. Uh, something of a sense of celebration-ish, I would say, coming through from your calls. Um, certainly businesses, you think of our caller from Wales, uh, opening his, his card and gift shop uh, for the first time um, in ages, being able to pay his suppliers because he had to close down at Christmas or, or five days before Christmas. Christmas would normally see him uh, earning 10% of his annual turnover. So a massive deal, massive deal uh, for people opening their businesses today. And I know for many of you, it is a matter of life and death for your business, a matter of survival. Um, and what about you, me, as customers? What do you plan to do? 0345 973 the number to call. You can text 84850, you can tweet at LBC. Um, I still don't understand, says Lowe, uh, why everyone thinks the hairdresser is safe, especially for the hairdresser. If you're standing within a meter and the customer isn't wearing a mask, which is so often the case, humid conditions, often the door not open in this weather. Well, anyone who's running a business and isn't opening a door is bonkers in my view i mean I, I i mean i happen to be somebody who likes the cold and would sit outside in any weather but i i cannot believe how mesh people are in this country particularly when there's a pandemic you just think everyone needs ventilating open a window open a door and if you know if you if you're cold stick on a jumper fill a hot water bottle put a blanket over your knees whatever it takes but that's the way to do it. And if, if you're in a hairdresser's and people aren't wearing masks, you're in the wrong hairdresser, is what I would say. Let's talk to Professor Clifford Stott, Professor of Social Psychology at Keele University, a member of the SAGE Subcommittee on Behaviours. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Behaviour, so hard to change. Well, I think one thing the pandemic has taught us is actually the opposite, that behaviours have changed so dramatically over the last year uh, across the whole population. So I think I've learned um, that lesson from the pandemic. But some, the reason I say it's so hard to change is, is how, how many people really kick against any change. Well, I think, again, I think that that's, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, of course, some people do. And of course, infractions have been an issue throughout. But what's lost is is the bigger picture and that bigger picture is is how many people across the whole swathe of our society have have adhered to the guidance and, and go out of the house with the motivation to 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 adhere to the guidance i think i think you, we're, i think we're, i think we're at cross purposes i'm talking about once freedom kicks in i mean i think you're absolutely right the adherence to lockdown has been largely very very impressive indeed hasn't it and incredibly helpful and life-saving that was the point of it but when, when you think about when, as soon as people are given an inch, I, I, I don't know, does, does the psychology of human being, human nature mean they take a mile? Well, again, I think that's, it's not necessarily we're speaking of purposes, it's that underlying assumption in question. I, I'm not sure that's the case. I think, I mean, maybe different for you, but when I go out of my front door, even though I've been involved in thinking about these issues from the outset, I'm confused about what I am and I'm not allowed to do. So it is really, really confusing. And I think that your 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 reflection there about the open window is about trying to help people to understand how to perform localised risk assessments. Like you said, you know, if you if you're in a hairdresser's and they're not wearing masks, you're in the wrong hairdresser. Well, I think in a sense, it's about 
helping people to understand what what they need to consider when they go into spaces. Is this a safe space for me or not? How can we all understand each other in this new, more relaxed environment, ways that continue our opportunity to reduce transmission and, of the virus? And that really will involve a lot of good humour, won't it? Because I've, I've had mixed experiences over the past year, and I would include myself here when I'm describing bad reactions. Um, when you can, I've had lovely moments where a, a woman I remember at the very beginning of the first lockdown asked me to stand a bit further away at the till in, in the food shop we were in. I just kind of, my concentration drifted and I just moved too close to it near the, the till. And you know, and I said, gosh, I'm so sorry. I just I drifted off and moved back. It was a, and then we started chatting generally, but from a correct distance, you know. And I've had others where I've been really narky with people about not wearing masks, or they've been narky with me about being too close or whatever. And it's, uh, we do need to oil the wheels with a bit of charm, don't we? Oh, absolutely. And isn't it funny how, how things we used to think were rude are now polite? You know, <laughs> Keep away from me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite funny, really. But I, th I think that, for me, is, you know, it's going to be the abiding memory. It's the sense of solidarity with strangers that I've been able to find in the pandemic. Mm. Negotiate moments because I haven't really met that many people who have been difficult. I think the vast majority of people I've bumped into have been like me and wanted to navigate moving through that space or through yes. that door in a way that keeps us mutually safe. Except for joggers. <laughs> yeah, <I'm really> <laughs> the number of joggers I do just think, oh, right, give me a bit of space and maybe breathe less all over me. Zola, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is funny, but I, again, you know, I think what we lose sight of as well is the way a lot of these rules are designed to protect us as a population, and they don't always readily apply into the individual. And it's that kind of ambiguity, the difference between the population level and the individual circumstance, that is what we need yeah. to get ahead. And it's about finding the balance between those two, isn't it? Thanks very much indeed, Professor Professor Clifford Stott, Professor of Social Psychology at Keele University, also a member of the SAGE uh, subcommittee on behaviours. Stan Morgan uh, joins me now, strategic leader of Birmingham Hospitality Group. We've spoken before. Uh, that group represents 250 members and also owns Craft and Eight, two fine dining restaurants in Birmingham. Big day, Sam. It certainly is indeed. Yeah, so what's it, what has it involved getting to this day? Um, I think I'm on day 29 now of getting our, uh, you know, our restaurants uh, in a position to reopen and uh, we're lucky enough to actually not be opening today, we're actually opening Wednesday, I think if it was today I'd be far more stressed than, than what I am currently. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's, it, has it involved just constant work in the lead up to it? Yeah, absolutely, you know, when you, uh, when you're in a hospitality business like this, it's certainly not switching the light switch on and and restarting is a significant yeah. amount of work towards, you know, that repositioning of, of getting open. So, um, yeah, we've been working hard, um, as has, you know, all the businesses in, in Birmingham to be in a position to be able to reopen. How many members of your group do you think are in real trouble? Um, the, uh, the vast majority are, are significantly struggling. Uh, of the 256 members currently, there's only 49 of them that are actually able to open. Um, with outside space, Birmingham City Centre is not um, rife with outside space and as such um, that's limited the amount that can reopen and equally um, even those that can reopen doesn't mean that they're going to be operating profitably. Um, in, in fact it's probably estimated that according to the roadmap we wouldn't be operating profitably until around August time. Right and do, uh, are any under what you would regard as sort of mortal threat as businesses? Well, I mean, we've, we've, we're reporting at the moment that just over 40 are not opening and not going to reopen ever. So of, your, of, that, your, of your 250 members? That's correct, yeah, so it's 20% um, is the current loss figure. And, and what was the difference, if you see what I mean? What, what was, the, what was the, the sort of the difference between those that survived and those that didn't? Um, uh, cash capital. So those businesses that had significant you know, backers or had owners with um, deeper pockets than those that, that didn't. Unfortunately, that's the brutal mm. um, kind of situation that we find ourselves with this pandemic. So those that yeah. needed the money to continue to come in, come what may, um, versus those that had a bit of a cushion. That's absolutely correct, yes. So, yes. It, it, and, and how has the public responded? Because presumably a lot of bookings have been pre-taken. Pre yeah, absolutely. I, I think... Um, 
most of the hospitality businesses are operating on a, on a dockable you know, process only, so no walk-ins. Um, that assists us from a track and trace point of view, but also assists um, those businesses with understanding the position for which you know they're going to be approaching on that day. I'd say that the public bounce back has been significant. Um, I can speak, you know, freely about you know about my uh, restaurants and say that the public have, have come back in in swarms, and and that's encouraging. Um, but equally, we you know we also need to remember that we are in the United Kingdom, and eating outdoors has never been exactly exactly something that's conducive to um, the United Kingdom's uh, yeah. weather. Um, and those aspects will naturally have an impact. Um, you know, should the weather turn on us over the next five weeks, then we'll we'll be struggling a little bit. But, but you know, I mean, it's not my business, obviously. I'm just I'm just the girl that turns up and has the food and the drink. But it's I, I've travelled a lot in my life as a reporter, you know, and uh, and. Uh, I, I think it is a peculiarly British thing that, that, that we let the weather put us off stuff, isn't yeah. it? I, I've, yeah, been, to, I've been to much colder places than Britain and more yeah. and more change or as changeable weather as Britain, or just grim weather. And they, they get yeah. round it. They get round it. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and that's the that's the approach that we're going to be taking with with our outside specs. I mean, we we um, we are completely prepared for cold weather. You know, we've got literally enough enough heating you know that we'd need the national grid to power it um but um with the the one that always seems to, to trip uk hospitality venues up is the rain and um you know the british people don't like the rain so they uh, they dive out of it so <laughs> i mean I, I know it's a bit of a it's a bit of a hobby horse of mine this i just think it's not going to kill you it's a bit of rain no. put something over yeah. your head and keep yeah keep talking <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I 100% I 100%, um, I 100 agree with you, and I really hope that that's how we take it. And maybe this is a, you know, a psyche change for the future for, you know, the British public is that, you know, dining outside is actually a really good fun thing. And, you know, if we can adapt our venues to be as accommodating as possible and to ensure that they have a great experience, then why would we not continue to do that into the future? Yeah, because um, it's about the venues making it comfortable as well, isn't it? Of course. of course it is. Yeah, and that's, that's what we're here for. I mean, you know, hospitality has been a lonely sector to be in, you know, over the last uh, the last period. And that's very unusual for us. You know, we normally see over a thousand people through our venue every single week. Um, and therefore, it's a very social environment. So therefore, to be kind of locked away in your homes, you kind of feel lonely. But that's been the case for many people. You know, we're just glad... Um, Madam, um, what is looking like uh, right now, uh, the day which I can promise you we can be, it will be Saturday. Um, the other days uh, we were terribly busy, but on Saturday from early morning I can get my boys ready with me and everything be, you know, spot on. Unfortunately, Wednesday is not possible at the moment, but uh, like I said, I can promise you, if it's okay with you, to do the job on Saturday. Thank you. No, hej, hej, jadę do domu, już możesz stawić na herbatkę.
No to było chyba wymuszenie. Stanowczo to było wymuszenie. Teraz to było na czerwonym, proszę ja pana, pani. Nie wiem, kto tam jedzie.